hello and welcome to another video it has been a while and with the new part of exile league coming out it's about time we get back into the game uh, if you're a viewer from runescape uh, well thank you first of all for clicking on this part of exile video uh, if you're burnt out or looking for a new game i definitely advise you to check out part of exile it's a pretty fun game it's very complicated to get into but it's definitely worth it and the majority of it is seasonal so don't feel like you're gonna be behind because everyone starts fresh and the next season starts this Friday so definitely a good time to give it a shot. And now this first video it's mainly gonna be informational and it's gonna show you the ways I get most of my information about the new updates and where to find new stuff for Part of Exile. On top of that also mainly focused on trading and the uh, tools I use for Part of Exile. Uh, so I hope it helps and I'll also talk a little bit about the videos I've planned at the end of the video. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is the Battle of Exile official Discord. I think I've showed this already in uh, one of my videos. But this is the official Battle of Exile Discord. Uh, of course, everything I'm going to show in this video, I'll leave like the invite link to Discord and all the links and everything in the description. So if anything in the video you find helpful and you don't use already, you can find the link in the description. Uh, so of course, Battle of Exile Discord, there's so many people in here. Um, the most Im the thing I like the most about this, because since everyone nowadays uses Discord, it's very easy that all the um, updates that Paravexal does, uh, the Discord instantly like put a link to it. So as you can see here, uh, there are some patch notes for Paravexal Harvest. Uh, the manifesto that was released, I think, uh, well, yesterday night for me, I guess it was, uh, which has some unfortunate changes for me, but we'll get into that another time. Uh, Rip Headhunter, uh, you know, here there's animals for this league, which look pretty nice already, uh, unfortunately no beyond which is the most important thing but there is Nemesis so Headhunter will be a lot cheaper than it normally is on top of that, well I'll just say it now uh, thanks Manifesto but Headhunter got nerfed a significant amount especially for self curse builds so unfortunately I don't think Headhunter will be worth a lot and it kinda screws over all of my builds but you know it's always nice to have a different change of meta um, either anyway, so this is the main reason I use this uh, Discord for. Is just to find all the news here. Uh, pretty easy. You get notified if you want to. You can obviously turn notifications on off, but I keep them on. And there's some other channels here, like first time player questions, beginner questions. Like you have a lot of helpful people in here. So um, just join the Discord, I guess, and see. There's even if you just talk, uh, in some channels, you can even look like recruiting guilds, like. You can look here, looking for a group, so you can find some other players maybe, and um, you can just join up and find some people to play with. So that's up to you. Anyway, so the next one I want to talk about is the PoE Reddit. Uh, uh, probably most people already know about this, but Reddit is another fantastic way to find uh, stuff that's going on, especially if you kind of play solo and don't really know a lot of people, or just do your own thing and like stay in your lane. Um, it's always nice on League Start to like check out the Reddit uh, at the start because if there's something that's really good or like kind of broken or something that you can really uh, take a lot of advantage from, usually there will be a Reddit post about it pretty soon into the league. So if like someone figures something out about a league mechanic that's really profitable or something, you can always pick it up on the Reddit. It's pretty nice, and I mean you can just see if there's some bugs going on or something big or some updates they're waiting. Now you can just check the first and the second page, I guess, of the Reddit now and then, uh, just to keep up to date. So the next thing I want to talk about is PoE.Ninja. Uh, I've already talked about this, I think, briefly in one of the videos, which again, this will be briefly. You have two sections to the guide. You have economy and builds. And uh, now we're going to start with economy. Uh, on League Start, mind you, that a lot of the prices might not be very accurate because they're not traded a lot. So especially for things like Helm Enchants, uh, the prices might not be very accurate, but you can generally get an idea of what's very expensive and what isn't, so the stuff at the top is obviously pretty meta and will be pretty expensive. Uh, the main reason I use this is for skill gems. Uh, now you can select at the top if you want level 20 gems, so with say 20 quality for example, or if you want to go for 21, 20 gems. Uh, you generally, again, same applies, the stuff at the top is probably worth more than the stuff at the bottom, uh, because it's more meta and traded a lot more. Uh, so if you don't know what gems to level, this is a great way to check what's kind of in the flavor. Uh, so you can see here, for example, Ray Spectre is probably worth a lot. Now mind you, be sure to set this to Harvest, because obviously now it's the standard, but once Harvest comes out, there will be a Harvest option for the League, or obviously to your relevant League. Uh, now the main section I use is the Build section, uh, because it's pretty easy to check the meta. 
Uh, it'll usually record like most characters. Now, for now, it only records 99 to 100, but usually on League Star, it records between level 90 to 100 or 95 to 100, depending how many people are, are like at high levels. So it generally uh, records most high level players. Uh, now, obviously, at the top, you can see the ascendancies. Now, obviously, this league, we had a pretty one sided meta with everyone going Guardian Ascendant. Um, obviously, the Herald stacking builds. And here are the items that are probably most used, uh, as you can see. So you can quickly see the meta. Now, the next thing is, say for your build, for example, you're playing a miner and you want to see what other people are doing. Your build maybe is stuck or you don't deal as much damage as you like to. So you're playing a saboteur and you'll see the highest level players. Now, if you can um, change this like you want, like the people most life, most ES, uh, up to you. But I generally just keep it on life. And then you can check a few people's uh, setup out. So it'll open, you see what items they're using, flasks they're using, gems, their skill tree, and here are uh, the gems again, the links they're using. So obviously I would never say to just copy one guide and especially on league start since a lot of the players will still be changing out gears all the time and you know, Paravex, uh, PoE Ninja might update while they're changing out gear. So some of the characters might not be as they are in actual game. Uh, but you can generally get an idea if you check like five or more people out and say they're all using for example uh, trip and mine damage support and you're not then maybe it might be good to look into it because as a miner it might be like a really good jump for you for example so it's a good idea to get some motivation uh, i mean inspiration actually for your build and to help you out a bit so a pretty useful site next piece is poedb.toe uh, slash us because uh, you can go all the way down i think and change the languages if you're from another country um, but you know usually keep it in English so this is the one website I always go to for crafting uh, purposes because usually this is the one of the websites that is always up to date so when new leaks come out and new mods come out so you can up here you just go to mods and if you want to craft something you can always like check what influence say you want to craft a dagger and click daggers and it'll show you what you can get and uh, for example here these are like all the shaper prefixes elder so you can come here and since crafting changes a lot i think especially with harvest there's gonna come so much more crafting stuff i think podb is the most up-to-date site uh, you can correct me if i'm wrong on that but this is the main site everyone uses and you can even check the fossils you want the item level so there's a lot of things and you can always see what you can get if you click on it you can see them better uh, this is the item level you need for the mod uh, this is the weighting of, of the mod so obviously 50 weighting is very low so it's very rare to get this for example so you can come here to see if you're about to craft something or you're looking for something specific if it's even possible to get the mods you're looking for and how rare it is so you can also see like if you want to craft something and select the fossils the next section will be all about trading and of course to start it off it's the official pair of excel trading site i do advise to use this over any other site like poe.trade for example which used to be very popular but most people did switch over and the main reason for switching over is because the trade api um, on PoE.trade it's way behind compared to the official website. Uh, if you ever have it when you're trying to buy an item and you have to PM 20 people down the list and they all always reply with sold or just ignore you since it's that out of date, well you'll have that a lot less when using the official site because it's the trade API is way faster. Now, obviously the first day or two it's very active, there's a lot of players always trading so obviously you'll still get it on this side but it definitely is a massive difference. Like. You'll even, if you try to PM people on here, you'll even have people replying to you like stop using PO.trade because it's a lot slower. So it does take a little bit of time to get used to using this side, but it's definitely worth it, trust me. I made this switch myself like two leagues ago and I have not regretted it. Next up is going to be two tools I actually do use uh, myself. So first one, uh, probably the one that I use the least is Trade Macro. Um, so if you run it, it's an 8k script. So I will just load up here real quick. Obviously, like there's updates to it and stuff as well. Um, but pretty much there's only one use I have for the trade macro anymore, um, well two uses I guess, but one is kind of minimal. Uh, once it loads up here I'll show you. For uh, part of Excel trade macro, now obviously right click it, trade info settings. So on the settings you can see all your hotkeys which you can obviously change if you want. Uh, the most important thing you always want to do is set it to the correct league. So standard, hardcore delirium, hardcore delirium. Obviously this is going to change to harvest once the league is actually out, so then you just put it to harvest. Uh, this is very important because the main thing I use the trade macro for is to price check unique items. So obviously if you have a set of standard, you're just losing all the money. So make sure you have it set to the correct league. 
now all this other stuff um, you can check it out for yourself and probably change some stuff around if you want but like I said I only use this for one specific thing uh, which the price hike control D now mind you uh, I'll do an example here um, mind you that you should only use this for unique items if I actually can find any items uh, I'll check it with this as well just to show you well I have a unique item I want an actually oh, let's check the guild stash actually uh, and here we go a screaming eagle so uh, the way this works is you just hover over an item and you press ctrl D now as you see there it requests the price uh, I can't really hover my mouse because it's gonna disappear but like you can see on the top it's a screaming eagle item level and then it will show this, the league in brackets so here it's a standard so make sure it says harvest there so you know you're in the correct league and then it will show like the top uh, people oh, let me redo it because it went away so it will show the top people who are selling this item for the cheapest price so as you can see a few people are uh, silver and alchemy and then one chaos so I can say that this item is worth maximum one chaos now obviously you still need to check the rolls uh, on this because a lot of uniques are worth a lot more if the roll is like perfect or near perfect but generally if an item is uh, has a lot of people listing it at a chaos or less then it most likely is worthless even with good rolls so th that's just a fast way to know now if that said like five chaos or more starting point then i'll check the rolls and see how much it actually is worth but Especially on league launches, because with the meta always changing, the patch notch always changing everything. Especially this league, a lot of uniques are getting reworked. So, again, you're going to need to learn the price of all the uniques again. So, this is a fast way to know if something is worth worthless or actually worth something. Uh, again, the control D only works on unique items, because, say, if you do it on a rare item, obviously it cannot read the mods. So, as you see here, uh, it'll show you, like, can't really get a price, because you need to check the rare mods. Now there are ways to do this with trade micro but I never really use this because when I do get a rare item that I do want to sell that I know is worth something I'll manually look it up on the website but it's very rare that I get a rare item that's worth something since I pretty fastly stop picking up rares altogether so I usually don't really have a need for this. So now the other trade program is a trades companion. Now you might have heard of this before again it's another HK script. I'll take a minute to load up here, your version, completely up to date, so it automatically does the updates, I mean, you can probably change that in the settings, so here it is, trade companion, obviously you can open the settings and change everything how you want it to look, um, but I think I have most of it set to default, now I'm gonna see if I have a friend online that can PM me to give you a demonstration of what this does, um, so here we go, I have found my friend PM me, so as you can see, just PM me, I would like to buy a corpse idol, I'm a standard legacy laptop, now what this does, trade companions over here, I mean you can obviously move this, um, but I'm going to add them to the friend list. Uh, as you can see, it shows you the buyer and everything. Uh, now what you can do is, you can uh, press this button, which will just invite them to your party, which is pretty easy. Now it also shows you, uh, so you know it's in tab legacy, so you go to tab legacy, uh, which is over here, and it will even highlight the positions in, so as you see the disposition, now if I want you can press this button now, it'll send a trade to him, offer the item, and then obviously he will put up the whatever he's paying me for it, uh, this is his thing, except, and then you can click thank you, which sends him a thank you and kicks him from the party, so it's pretty convenient, especially when you're trying to trade maps and everything, so uh, that'll everything be there. You can obviously set it up the way you want it, but that's how I do it, and it's pretty easy when you're trading a lot of maps, uh, you'll get all the PMs in the tabs over there, I can just quickly trade everyone there. So, well, The next thing I want to talk about, and probably the most important one, is a filter. Uh, if you're playing POV, you 100% need a filter. Uh, it shows you a lot more uh, of your loot in depth, so it's uh, way easier. Uh, now the easiest way to do this is just go to filterplay.xyz, which is the main filter people use. Um, as you can see, it even says 3.11 level update in progress. Now, usually the filter itself will only go uh, it will only be ready a few hours before the league launch, so just be patient and update it. You can usually keep up on the Reddit and the Discord, it'll show a notification when everything's filter is ready. Um, now when you come to this site, obviously there's a lot you can customize to make your own filter to your own needs. You can change the colors and everything, you can change the style. Now, obviously for the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible for filters everyone can use. I personally even use them uh, as basic as they come. 
So you want to go to the strictness here. Oh, you don't want to click that. You just want to see the strictness. Now, on leak start, I always advise to start either soft or regular. You can even do semi strict. I think I personally start on semi strict. I would definitely not go any lower unless you know what you're doing or you customize your filter yourself. Now, I'm going to show it with regular. So that's the only thing you change. After that, you can go to download. Now, there's two ways to download them. Uh, the first way is to sign in with your PoE account, which will bring up the official part of Excel site. Now, I'm already logged in. If you're not, it'll obviously ask you to log in. And then you need to authorize filter blade. Uh, so I'm just going to authorize that. And now, as you can see here, I'm logged in. This is my account name. Uh, after that, when you go to download again, so it says you're already signed in, you can sync it with PoE. Uh, I already have a few filters here from previous leaks. Now, so I'm going to add a new filter. I'm going to call it uh, YouTube test, I guess. Uh, you can make it public or private. It doesn't really matter. And no one's really going to copy your filter or anything. Uh, so there you go. You sync it. Successfully updated filter. Now, if you go in-game and go to options, and you check it's already here now if it wasn't here you can just click the refresh button and there you go youtube test save and that's it your filter is live now and ready to go you can obviously change uh, the further you go in the game obviously you want maybe to get a uh, better strictness to show less so you can just download whichever one you want and way later on if you have some time maybe you want to customize some stuff uh, maybe you want to change like which like for example say chaotic disposition is worth a lot so you want to move it to this uh, section for example so it shows it like this obviously you can do a lot of customization but i'm not going to go into that now the other option which is the old option of how we used to uh, download the filter is just the download file for this you don't need to log in you can even log out to show you uh, so you have to download select option two now here you can name it what you want so i'm going to name it uh oh, the youtube filter um, I'm going to call it 5 just so we know it's this one and uh, just click download you have this file now um, I'm already here but you want to find the directory of your Path of Exile folder now for most people this is going to be uh, documents my games Path of Exile and then in here you just drag the file and you dump it in here as you can see I already done one so this is the second one um, so after this that's it you just go in game again options and there it is, you do filter 5, again you can refresh if it doesn't show, save, and you're done. So you can use either option, uh, they both work, and there you go, you have an item filter. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is Pad of Building, which is another tool that a lot of players use. Uh, now again, you can go very in-depth with this, but I'll just show you the basics of how I use it and how it's the easiest to use, I suppose. Um, so when a lot of people make build guides or they share their builds, usually you'll hear them refer to a paste bin link, uh, which usually refers to a pad of building link. Now, when you open pad of building, uh, first thing you want to do is on the bottom left, check for updates. Uh, now I already did this, so I know there's no new updates, but you always want to have the most relevant version since especially this league, there's going to be some changes to the passive tree. So you definitely want the latest version available. Um, after that, I you see no update available, dismiss. Uh, you want to go here top left import and export now obviously you can share your own build but we're just going to import one so you click import from pastebin you paste uh, the pastebin here import so the code is valid import again and there you go uh, this is just some build i found on the forums uh, for demonstration purposes um, so first of all skill 3 is probably the most relevant one because this is the main reason i think people like better building so you can just see the skill tree uh, see the ascendancy as well on the top you can see how many points he's used so it's not a level 100 character it even says required level 84 um, now some build makers do this uh, let's see if this guy did it yep so this guy did it so you have different skill trees for how many points so obviously if it's like 14 points so when you first start this build this is the path he advises you to take again 27 points and you can just check this is if you have no clusters and you have 110 points uh, how your skill tree should look and obviously the further down you go is usually the more min max it is so i guess this is probably the best version of the build uh, with double cluster jewels and almost level 100 and level 97 so uh, this is one thing so the passive tree uh, next thing is the skills now um, okay so this guy shows you even what gems you're using in which act so act one this is like your main skill i guess uh, puncture for single target probably another skill so it's a toxic rain build um, so you can see here again 
Act 2, you want to add Skitter Bolts. Act 3, you got Despair. Um, these are your gems after library. So you're going to keep going down. Now, obviously, under this section, late game gems. So this is probably your ideal setup. Uh, and your support gems are also uh, Vol Spells and Flame Dash, obviously. Uh, so here you can check your skills. Now, this one's very detailed, but a lot of people pretty much only have the late game section in there. Um, but this one also has the leveling section in there. Uh, next up, the items. So here you can see which items he is using. Um, so you can clearly see like what type of bow you want. You want a bow plus three and some damage over time multiplier if you can get it. Um, then again, what you want on your quiver. Pretty much damage over time, life, resists. So you can see what items you're using. If he's using any unique, so it's your step here. Um, the flask he's using, the jewels he's using. So it shows you every single piece of gear he is using. Uh, so you can quickly see like which uniques and which uh, stats you should look for on the gear. Um, now these are the main things I use it for, just to see the items and the skill tree and the skills. Um, now, um, let me see if this guy did Okay, so this guy actually did it. This is a very good guide here. Um, so there's a note section. Now most base bins you will find it, this will be empty. But this one he put uh, quite a bit of work into it. Because he says even in which act, what you get and what you should look for. So this helps you a lot. Um, so as you can see, remember uh, to add the market boost to your filter. So there you go. This gives you a lot of information. Now, the step further from this is to go to configuration. And this is pretty much to check your damage. Uh, but this is very unreliable because, first of all, you need to understand um, that a lot of these stuff are situational. So for example, are you always on full life? No, unless this is a CI build, which it might be. He has some energy shield, but I think it's still a life build, so you might not always be on full life. So what that means is he might lose, well he's not using damage on full life, but say you're using damage on full life support and you take Aureoles on full life, yes, when you're not, you're just giving yourself fake damage. So this is a bit more advanced, so I wouldn't recommend to work with this unless you know what you're doing, but this is just to check your damage, it won't really help you out too much. Uh, so that was better building, now, again I'm keeping it pretty simple because uh, the majority of things you need is just the first two things. That was it for this video, hope some of these tips help you out. Uh, I want to say thank you for all the support I've been getting on my YouTube channel, uh, especially last PoE League, got a lot of views, a lot of comments. I do read all the comments, I try to reply to most of them, uh, so keep them coming. If you have any questions, please put in the comments, I'll try to reply to it. Uh, I do have some videos planned still, even though the League is starting in a few days, I still want to make a few videos before then. Uh, the patch notes should be coming out anytime now, so once I read those I can finally start planning and changing my builds around. I'm um, planning a video about, uh, I'll most likely go Miner again as League start, even though with the Manifesto, uh, Ball Lightning Mine is probably getting nerfed slightly, but there's enough options as a Miner template, so I don't think it will matter too much. Uh, so definitely after patch notes I will most likely look into um, revisiting my Miner build and getting it ready for League start. And probably give some leveling tips and how to get to bossing on a budget. Um, I also want to look at my uh, further builds and what my plans will be for the next week uh, of the league start. Uh, since my ranger probably got destroyed as well since self curse time chains is probably getting a big hit with the headhunter changes. So I'll keep you up to date with everything and expect a video pretty shortly. Have a nice day.